Zermelo set theory, as set out in an important paper in 1908 by Ernst Zermelo, is the ancestor of modern set theory. It bears certain differences from its descendants, which are not always understood, and are frequently misquoted. This article sets out the original axioms, with the original text and original numbering. The axioms of Zermelo set theory Axiom I. Axiom of extensionality. If every element of a set M is also an element of N and vice versa, then M N. Briefly, every set is determined by its elements. Axiom II. Axiom of elementary sets. There exists a set, the null set, that contains no element at all. If A is any object of the domain, there exists a set, A, containing A and only A as an element. If A and B are any two objects of the domain, there are always exists a set A, B, containing as elements A and B but no object X distinct from them both, see axiom of pairs. Axiom 3. Axiom of separation, whenever the propositional function is definite for all elements of a set M, M possesses a subset M containing as elements precisely those elements X of M for which is true. Axiom IV. Axiom of the power set, to every set T there corresponds a set T, the power set of T, that contains as elements precisely all subsets of T. Axiom V. Axiom of the union, to every set T there corresponds a set T, the union of T, that contains as elements precisely all elements of the elements of T. Axiom V. Axiom of choice, if T is a set whose elements all are sets that are different from and mutual Mutually disjoint. Its union T includes at least one subset S1 having one and only one element in common with each element of T. Axiom 7. Axiom of infinity. There exists in the domain at least one set Z that contains the null set as an element and is so constituted that to each of its Elements are there corresponds a further element of the form a. In other words, that with each of its elements are it also contains the corresponding set a as element. Connection with standard set theory. The links show where the axioms of Zimello's theory correspond. There is no exact match for elementary sets. The empty set axiom is already assumed by axiom of infinity, and is now included as part of it. The axioms do not include the axiom of regularity and axiom of replacement. These were added as the result of work by Thor Alf Skolem in 1922, based on earlier work by Abraham Frankel in the same year. In the modern ZFC system, the propositional function referred to in the axiom of separation is interpreted as any property definable by a first-order formula with parameters. So the separation axiom is replaced by an axiom scheme. The notion of first-order formula was not known in 1904 when Zermelo published his axiom system, and he later rejected this interpretation as being too restrictive. Zermelo set theory is usually taken to be a first-order theory with the separation axiom replaced by an axiom scheme with an axiom for each first-order formula. It can also be considered as a theory in second-order logic, where now the separation axiom is just a single axiom. The second-order interpretation of Zermelo's set theory is probably closer to Zermelo's own conception of it, and is stronger than the first-order interpretation. In the usual cumulative hierarchy v alpha of ZFC set theory, any one of the sets v alpha for alpha a limit ordinal larger than the first infinite ordinal omega forms a model of Zimelo set theory. So the consistency of Zimelo set theory is a theorem of ZFC set theory. Zimelo's axioms do not imply the existence of omega or larger infinite cardinals, as the model v omega 2 does not contain such cardinals. The axiom of infinity is usually now modified to assert the existence of the first infinite von Neumann ordinal. The original Zermelo axioms cannot prove the existence of this set, nor can the modified Zermelo axioms prove Zermelo's axiom of infinity. Zermelo's axioms cannot prove the existence of as a set nor of any rank of the cumulative hierarchy of sets with infinite index. MacLane set theory 
MacLean set theory, introduced by MacLean, is the Meloset theory with the axiom of separation restricted to first-order formulas in which every quantifier is bounded. MacLean set theory is similar in strength to Topper's theory with a natural number object, or to the system in Principia Mathematica. It is strong enough to carry out almost all ordinary mathematics not directly connected with set theory or logic. The aim of the Mellows paper. The introduction states that the very existence of the discipline of set theory seems to be threatened by certain contradictions or antinomies that can be derived from its principles, principles necessarily governing our thinking, it seems, and to which no entirely satisfactory solution has yet been found. Zamello is of course referring to the Russell antinomy. He says he wants to show how the original theory of Gail Cantor and Richard Dedekind can be reduced to a few definitions and seven principles or axioms. He says he has not been able to prove that the axioms are consistent. A non-constructivist argument for their consistency goes as follows. Define V alpha for alpha 1 of the ordinals 0, 1, 2, omega, omega plus 1, omega plus 2, omega 2 as follows. V0 is the empty set. For alpha a successor of the form beta plus 1, V alpha is defined to be the collection of all subsets of V beta. For alpha a limit then V alpha is defined to be the union of V beta for beta less than alpha. Then the axioms of Zimelo set theory are consistent because they are true in the model V omega 2. While a non-constructivist might regard this as a valid argument, a constructivist would probably not. While there are no problems with the construction of the sets up to V omega, the construction of V omega plus 1 is less clear because one cannot constructively define every subset of V omega. This argument can be turned into a valid proof in zamello frenkel set theory. But this does not really help because the consistency of zamello frenkel set theory is less clear than the consistency of zamello set theory. The axiom of separation. Zamello comments that axiom 3 of his system is the one responsible for eliminating the antinomies. It differs from the original definition by Cantor, as follows. Sets cannot be independently defined by any arbitrary logically definable notion. They must be constructed in some way from previously constructed sets. For example they can be constructed by taking power sets, or they can be separated as subsets of sets already given. This, he says, eliminates contradictory ideas like the set of all sets or the set of all ordinal numbers. He disposes of the Russell paradox by means of this theorem. Every set possesses at least one subset that is not an element if, let be the subset of for which by axiom 3, is separated out by the notion, then cannot be in, for if is in, then contains an element x for which x is in x, which would contradict the definition of, if is not in, and assuming is an element of m, then is an element of m that satisfies the definition, and so is in which is a contradiction. Therefore the assumption that is in is wrong, proving the theorem. Hence not all objects of the universal domain B can be elements of one and the same set. This disposes of the Russell antinomy as far as we are concerned. This left the problem of the domain B, which seems to refer to something. This led to the idea of a proper class. Cantor's theorem. Zamello's paper is notable for what may be the first mention of Cantor's theorem explicitly and by name. This appeals strictly to set theoretical notions, and is thus not exactly the same as Cantor's diagonal argument. Cantor's theorem. If M is an arbitrary set, then always M less than P, the power set of M. Every set is of lower cardinality than the set of its subsets. Zamello proves this by considering a function phi, m p. By axiom 3 this defines the following set m, m equals m, m phi. But no element m of m could correspond to m, i.e., 
such that phi equals m. Otherwise we can construct a contradiction. 1. If m is in m, then by definition m phi equals m, which is the first part of the contradiction. 2. If m is not in m, but in m, then by definition m, m equals phi, which by definition implies that m is in m, which is the second part of the contradiction. So by contradiction m does not exist. Note the close resemblance of this proof to the ways Amelo disposes of Russell's paradox.